Hey guys, and welcome to Petrol Ped. Now, a few years ago, I was invited by a good mate of mine, Ellis, to drive actually the predecessor to this car, his Lancia Delta Integrale rally car. But today, today he's invited me to come and take a look at this, to drive this. Now, if you think about classic Mini Coopers, road-going Mini Coopers, you might well think instantly of the Italian job. But if you think about Mini Coopers and rally cars, the first thing you think about is Paddy Hopkirk. Paddy Hopkirk finished third in the 1962 Monte Carlo Rally in a Sunbeam Rapier. However, Hopkirk was becoming frustrated by the Rapier's lack of reliability. He first competed in a Mini at the 1963 Monte Carlo Rally, where he finished sixth. That season, he also finished second on the Tulip Rally, sixth on Liège Sophia Liège, and fourth on the RAC Rally. Alongside Henry Lydon, he won the 1964 Monte Carlo Rally in a Mini Cooper S, car number 37, with the registration number 33 EJB. They're the most recent all-British crew to have won the event. He also led the BMC team to win with fellow Mini drivers Timo Mackinnon and Rauno Altenen, placing fourth and seventh. The victory made Hopkirk a household name. So as you can see, some proper, proper history. Just think when, when rallying, when this thing hit the rally scene, people just didn't know what to make of it it was so small and tiny it absolutely blew everybody away winning the monte carlo rally and 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 just cementing itself in automotive legendary history i often get asked the question if i were to have any classic car what would it be well there's a really simple answer to that it's parked right in front of me a classic mini cooper s a road going one would be great but i think a fully rally prepared car like this i just i just think it's magnificent you know me i'm a huge mini fan but there are many people who might say i'm a kind of modern mini fan and that's not really a mini at all interestingly when i did 60 minis then there was a combination of classic minis and modern minis as owners we we get on and we don't really have a problem with it but it somehow seems to be the kind of mm, it's not really a mini this is a real mini i know it's a real mini look at it it's a thing of absolute beauty by far and away the easiest way for me to tell you the backstory to this car is to get ellis in the car with me and i'm going to be i'm so lucky i'm going to get to drive the car and i still can't quite pinch myself to believe it so yeah we'll in a moment we'll get ellis in the car and we'll go for a drive up the road and talk a little bit more about it but oh, wow it's just awesome i can just tell i'm going to be stuck for words most of the day now I'm really struggling with which is my favourite view of this car, the front or the rear. Let's start at the front because it's just fantastic. It's, it's just beautiful little things like this little leather strap here to hold the bonnet down, this row of four Lucas driving lamps. The dimensions of it is just so tiny. And, and even that, if you come round this side, the tiniest thing, these little 10 inch mini light -like wheels shod with Yokohama tires. This is a fully rally prepared car. This is as it was in period. It's not been had a big turbocharger thrown on it or an unoriginal engine. This car is totally, totally original. Now the back of the car is just as cool as the front. The telltale sign that this is an original Cooper S is it's got the two fuel filler caps either side central exhaust just awesome awesome thing love this spot lamp as well very cool but look i mean i'm i'm quite a big guy but i feel like a giant stood next to this car but let's jump inside because the inside is very very cool indeed oh, now then they don't call these minis for nothing they are absolutely tiny oh dear <laughs> so uh we'll find out far more about this from ellis very shortly but um the interior of this thing it is absolutely as original as the hot kirk mini would have been when paddy was was rallying them back in the day 
all of the instruments. You've got the little rev counter here, you've got the speedo in the middle, and it kind of talks about the fact it's one of four works replicas. There were, the, there were four made, this is the only left-hand drive one, and then you've even got things like the kind of timers and all the stuff that was needed by the co-pilot just on this side. Full roll cage, it's just a magnificent thing. It's, I honestly, when, when I get to experience cars like this, I haven't even driven it yet and I'm getting quite emotional, but this is, you know, this is exactly how the car would have been back in period when it was being rallied by Paddy Hopcock. It is stunning in here in every way. It's just magnificent. Oh, these seats are quite tight as well, but yeah, so we're gonna get to drive the car. It's only got a four speed box, very, very close ratio gears apparently, um, just as it would have been uh, back in the day. What a thing. Now, I reckon the next thing is we go and find Ellis, and we get some cameras set up in the car and we take this for a spin because I, for one, cannot wait to get driving this magnificent car. But it's just, full of history, these little pockets here with pens in them and timers and stuff. Wow! Right guys, you may well remember the gentleman sat to my right, Ellis. Welcome back to the channel mate. We were saying it's been a while. Yeah, I was thinking about it this morning, it's got to be a good couple of years, isn't it? I reckon so. I'll put links to um, the time I drove Ellis's rally car. But this video is all about this car. Mate, where do we start with this? So you've not had it that long, did you uh, say? No, we've, we've probably had it about four or five months yeah. and haven't really done anything with it. Um, and this will probably be the second time I've been in it. <laughs> so <laughs> Excellent. So and I've never sat in this seat, so... It, so first thing, they, it's quite tight in here, isn't it? It is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So this is only the second classic Mini I've ever driven, but um, the, the, the inside, so this is, so talk to us about the car, because this is exactly how it was in period. It is, this is a, as near as you can get to a, uh, the original Paddy Hopkirk winning car. Yeah. Um, this was um, put together along with three others, so this is one of four that was um, uh, built by Alec Paul, um, and it's, as, as near to it could be, um, all of the instrumentation, the engine, everything is as it was. And when was it made? Uh, this was, uh, these were built around 91, 92. Right, okay. Wow, what a thing. So I'm guessing start-up procedure is clutch down and... Clutch and... down, um, ignition on there, and then push the starter. <laughs> you need longer arms. I need longer <laughs> arms. <laughs> So, twin tanks, yeah. there is the pump switch over there. Yeah. Oh, that's that, that one? That is that one there. Yeah. Uh, it might want a, a little bit of choke. Choke? So for my younger viewers, <laughs> yeah. choke is something you used to have to pull out whenever you started a car in the olden days. Yeah. A little bit there, like, yeah, I have driven a car with a manual choke no. for about 30 years. Yeah, me neither. Uh, and where's the start? That's the starter, the starter. Is that push, one there? push the starter there. Oh, look at that. And that's it. Beautiful. Um, it's got a fly-off handbrake. Right, you know what that is? Uh, yes, but run me through it for my viewers. Well, it's it's for the benefit of handbrake turns and everything else. Yeah. Lift it up, no pressing of the button, yeah. and it's off. Yeah. And to put it back on, lift it up and push the button on. So okay. it works in reverse. So just... That's it. Wicked. In gear. There you go. There you go. So this has got straight cut gears and a quaif uh, limit slip diff in it. So it's a rally car, it won't drive like a ordinary road car. Okay. Oh my goodness me. Oh, you can hear those gears yeah. straight away. That is mega. So direct me, so which way are we going to uh, go? We'll go left. Wow. So, um, You said it was short geared. Oh, they're very short. Yeah. This. <laughs> Mate, I'm going to take this home. <laughs> well, you're welcome. So, do it right in the roundabout. Yeah. Have we got no one just there? Yeah. Yeah. 
proper, isn't it? This is proper! <laughs> We've got four gears. Yeah. So it's um, so we're in top. That's it. it. We're in top. The noise. It's just a straight cut box. Straight cut box. Yeah. Oh wow. So, so that's it. I keep going for that's it. No fifth or sixth gear. No, None of this flat it. paddle it, rubbish. It's four. Oh, and that's in gear kilometres an hour, I guess. That is what it is. Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> because it's just a magical experience. They're so tiny and nimble, but I can't imagine the days when these first hit the rally scene. And I guess it was um, escorts and lots of rear wheel drive things, and then these rocked up. And everyone probably looked at them in the paddock and went, what the hell's that? It was, and they were, and they, and they were there, you know, playing with the, 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 big, the big stuff, you know, and because they're nimble, and that's, that's where they excel. This is just on another level of amazing. The noise it makes. Well, I can I can retire a happy YouTuber now. This I mean the, <laughs> obviously I'm not pushing it at all. It just it sounds like it's about to rev out. It's probably got loads and loads it's left. Like, yeah. It doesn't feel that small. No, it doesn't at all because we're two big chaps, but it's just got a great for the steering, mate. The steering's quite a short rack, I guess. Yeah. recently and the response that got from I guess people of our generation that just they're, they're just there's something when you get in a car like this I mean this has got a lot of history to it so yeah. it's even more special yeah but that analog nature of the old cars you know the gears and no driver aids and just yeah. the noise that it, they make well when I brought this home the other day um, I, I, I reversed it out the trailer and there was uh, three young young lads, they must have been less than ten. Yeah. And they came over to me and they said, the mini, it sounds it sounds amazing. Uh, have you taken the cats off it and deleted the DPM? <laughs> <laughs> Another chap who um, he, he uses it a bit, um, and, and this is the fourth one. This is the only left hand right. Yeah, it's just read up about this that they say that you know you need to do a few miles to to sort of get the feel of it yeah. you know because it, it doesn't drive like a normal mini no you, you get to grips with it yeah i think so i mean it's i'm not sure the the rev counter whether that's it, where the red line is and no i don't know it's on at the moment i'm doing it by ear yeah but what i find with these older engines is where your ear thinks you should change yeah it's normally probably only about halfway sure they they actually can but the, the steering is just so light and darty. I mean, it's for me as a tall chap, they're always a bit challenging to drive because my knees are up near my yeah. uh, armpits. But yeah. it's that noise, the gearbox whining, and yeah. <laughs>
thank you. I always say this, I said it last time I drove your other car, to yeah. be able to share this experience with these, these guys. Yeah, yeah. Because you see these cars uh, in museums and uh, uh, you know shows and things, but to actually get to drive one, subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. I've got a massive flood to go through. Oh, I feel guilty now because you don't need to have this clean. <laughs> but I'll see you on the next film guys. Take care. Drive safe.